so hey nerds this is suman and in this video i am going to talk about einstein theory might i am saying might and i don't know it really well einstein theories might support my idea in quantum mechanical level right so if you are familiar with photoelectric effect if you have known about it in your high school classes uh, if you have a metal surface like here and when you shine light on it the uh, metal surface will get positively charged or simply i have to say when a, when a bright light is shine on it of a suitable frequency right the frequency must be have to be suitable in order to throw out the electron from the metal surface right so when a bright light is striked on a metal surface the electron the free electrons in the metal surface will eject out so what type of conclusion would you made in this particular scenario so if you have to think like a physicist and you have to make a conclusion in here so what would be your conclusion so you have to say the photon might behave as a particle because when the metal surface is filled with full of electrons in its surface the photon must have to behave as particle and when the particle hits particle the particle will eject out in the form uh, eject out with some kinetic energy right so recently in my last three videos i had discussed about a uh, normal g1 effect stark effect and combination of both electric and magnetic field in that particular case right so and i had made a assumption that the total energy of electron is quantized and it is negative and recently i am thinking about photoelectric effect and i had got some very beautiful point to prove my idea i guess or it was simply i don't know whether it is true or not but i had made an assumption there in my video whether that theorems were right or wrong i don't know but i guess all my theorems are wrong because i haven't done it in a quantum mechanical way because i had done it in a classical way assuming the elect uh, orbits are circular and i might i am be i will be wrong but i have just present my ideas and now uh, in photoelectric effect you might have seen the equation right so it is a be very beautiful equation it is based on the conservation of energy right so i am going to show you the total energy of electron is actually negative and it follows the planck's radiation law let us dive into the whiteboard so let us understand the first basics of photoelectric effect right so let's say we have a metal surface here right so and we have some free electrons in that metal surface whether you would say it's a probability of finding it because this effect is based on a particle nature of uh, matter just i am using the part i am consisting the electron is just a particle right so when you give a suitable frequency of radiation this is h nu according to planck's idea h nu the electron will emit out with some kinetic energy this much if the frequency is suitable uh, if the frequency is strong enough to eject the electron the electron will come out from the metal surface with some kinetic energy so based on this phenomena einstein wrote it down an equation known as einstein photoelectric equation and if you have to apply conservation of energy so you have to knew that the total energy does not equal to kinetic energy because the electron is bonded with electron and it has some energy so you have to overcome that some energy to eject out the electron and he said that the every metal has some threshold energy h nu not nu not is the threshold frequency right so every metal has certain threshold energy which has to be overcome in order to get some kinetic energy right so based on this principle einstein wrote it down the very beautiful equation the frequent h nu equals h nu not plus 1 by 2 m v e square i am writing v e as the velocity of electron right so einstein wrote it this equation and it's a very beautiful equation it is based on conservation of energy right <coughs> so let us say whether it works or not let us say the electron let us let us we have applied 20 joule of energy and uh, all the 20 joule energy would not convert it into kinetic energy because the electron is bonded with electron so so there has to be uh, there 
the, uh, the energy, some part of energy will have to overcome this energy barrier. So uh, let us assume the kinetic energy is just 10 joule. The kinetic energy is just 10 joule. So uh, out of 20 joule, the 10 joule is converted into kinetic energy and the remaining 10 joule is used to break the bond in my sense, right? Break the uh, bond between nucleus and electron, the 20 joule energy, uh, 10 joule energy. So if you apply this whole scenario to here, you have 20 joule energy and you converted it into 10 joule to do some 10 joule to do some uh, 10 joule to do some <coughs> 10 joule energy is used to overcome the energy barrier and the 10 joule remaining 10 joule is converted into kinetic energy so it is purely based on uh, conservation of energy right so so this is the equation that electron follows during photoelectric effect so now i would like to take you into more deeper level let us zoom this particular scenario Okay. Let us zoom this metal and let us approach to a single atom. So I am just making in a 3D coordinate because someone has made the video that I had already done some mistakes in my last idea. So let us assume this is the probability of finding electron and nucleus could be at here. I am not a, whether the nucleus is at rest or not, we don't have to worry about that. We are just doing the uh, photoelectric phenomena. So this is the region where electron is the probability of finding electron is very much high and if you see here and apply this equation suppose the electron is here at any instant of time let us assume that the probability is maximum here so when you apply the radiation when you apply the when you give some energy to it it already had some negative energy due to the nucleus right it already had some negative energy due to the nucleus. So, and if the frequency is strong enough, the particle will come out with some kinetic energy, right? So, you can actually say that, now, let us assume E be the energy of particle. Let us assume E be the energy of particle. And H nu is the frequency of photon, S will be the energy of photon and E be the energy of electron, right? And this would be something like that, that was here. So, apply conservation of energy here. Apply conservation of energy. So, if you have given H new energy to electron, then it will gain some kinetic energy. Half m v square. Right? And compare these two equations. Compare these two equations. So, when you compare this are you getting my point or not? Please. This is photoelectric equation and I am showing how the total energy of electron is negative and it follows Planck's radiation law. Right? So, if you give energy to electron, then it will gain some kinetic energy. Right? And if you compare these two equations, because in subatomic level, the threshold energy is nothing but the electrostatic uh, energy due to nucleus. The energy, the binding energy to the nucleus, right? So, if you compare this two equation, you will end up getting E equals minus H nu naught, right? You will end up getting E equals minus H nu naught. So, what is this? This is the energy of electron. This is the energy of electron in that orbit. Right? And this must have to be the frequency frequency of electron in that orbit. Right? If you zoom that atom and if you apply radiation to it, so the radiation has to overcome this energy because if you are tightly glued and someone wants to pull you apart so they have to put some energy to just break the bonds between you and the glue let's say we have two marbles and we have glued it we have glued it right we have two marbles and we apply force here right we applied force in each cases 
So in order to break this bond, we have to give some energy. Right or wrong? Right. We have to give some energy. If the energy is sufficient, if the energy is sufficient, they will break apart and move with some velocity. Let us say the glued energy is, is negative 10 joule and you are applying 20 joule of energy. So the energy is sufficient to break this bond. Okay, this bond will break down and 10 joule energy is used as kinetic energy. Right? Tangible energy is used as kinetic energy. So from this equation, I might conclude that my assumption is actually true, whether my ideas are wrong, whether the mathematics of my ideas are wrong, but this thing is actually true because Einstein theory already predicted the total energy of electron is negative and while it gains kinetic energy due to you have to overcome this energy barrier. Right? So if you rearrange this, well, I, I, got, I think you have got some ideas idea here. It is also based on the conservation of energy. If you apply conservation of energy of 10 joule and 20 joule, again here, we will end up getting the same result. Now, if we apply it, let us assume it is 20 joule and it is negative 10 joule. Right? And something, it has to be 10 joule. Why am, I, this is my prediction. It is a 10 joule because let us apply this law to here. So, H nu we have 20 joule, right? And minus H u naught is nothing but energy, and energy is negative 10 joule. So, it is negative 10 joule, and you will end up getting 10 joule of energy. So, it is purely based on same idea of Einstein, um, but my assumptions were that the uh, electron have some electron energy can be replaced by Planck's equivalent energy. Planck's law, electron do follow Planck's law because if you go deeper into the atom, you would end up getting this result. And this is nothing but the energy associated with electron. So if my idea was right or wrong, I don't know. And you have to make, if you have to make decision, you can also make the decision whether I'm right or wrong. So bye-bye.